Okay, so for 27, again, the part that you should be familiar with, because we did some of this for two class periods, it's just the um, undoing. So figuring out what you could take the derivative of to get x, or 1, and that would be x. I know it's x and not t or r or s or whatever because of this. And then what can we take the derivative of to get sine? negative cosine. Again, it would be easy to say positive cosine because you're trying to use the process opposite of what you did last semester. So take the derivative of this, make sure it gives you that. Take the derivative of this, make sure it gives you that. Check as you go along. Now, if we didn't have bounds here, then we would need a plus c. But because we have 0 to pi, you should have first time plugged in pi. So that would be pi minus cosine pi. The second time you should plug in 0, so 0 minus cosine 0, and then in the end subtract those two things. Alright, well pi minus cosine of pi, so this is unit circle, this would be negative 1, minus a negative 1 is like plus 1. Um, this is 0, what's the cosine of 0? Okay, so, so negative times a negative 1 would be plus 1, so pi plus 2, which is what Jessica gave me in the first place. So then how come the calculator gave me the wrong answer there then? I didn't think about this, but... Mm, no. Anytime you're dealing with the trig function, it makes a big difference if your calculator is in degree mode or radian mode, right? In higher math, you always want to be in radian mode. I'm in degree mode from earlier today. So, radian mode, let me ask my calculator again. All right, so pi plus two was correct the whole time. But you're gonna ask your calculator, especially if it's got a trig function, you better be careful um, that you've got it in radiant mode.